OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to know how to use the subtotal function. So in my scenario, I'm currently adding up all the revenue in this list and I'm doing so using the sum function. So I'm going to do the same thing using the subtotal function and then we'll see the difference between the sum function and the subtotal function. So equals subtotal. You've got two arguments. The first is function number. So with the function number, you specify to Excel what type of calculation you want to do. So you can see the list here, average count, max, min, product. We just want to sum things up. So I select sum down here and it puts a nine in that function number argument, comma. And then I need to specify a range of cells that I want to perform that calculation on. So for me, it's just these revenue figures. Now, all I need to do is close the bracket and press enter, and it does exactly the same thing as the sum function. Now, you may have noticed that the subtotal function seems to duplicate these calculations. For example, I have average here in the list, but I also have it down here. Now, the numbering of these calculations are different. So I had one, as an average there and 101 as an average there. And it's the same for sum. I've got nine for sum there and 109 for sum there. So what's the difference between these two versions of these calculations? Well, let's see. I'll choose 109 for this calculation. And then I'm gonna select the revenue to perform the calculation on. So I'm getting the same answers no matter what function I'm using at the moment. Now the first thing to note is that if I apply a filter to this list, let's say I filter for Southampton, the Southampton branch, you can see that sum ignores the filter. So it's still adding up all of the revenues, whereas the two versions of the subtotal function are only adding up the visible records. So we can start to see now why subtotal is different to sum and why it might be useful. So what's the difference between these two versions of the subtotal function? The first one, which uses nine as its function number, and the second one that uses 109. Well, I'm gonna get rid of the filter. And now I'm just gonna hide certain rows, manually hide them. So for example, let's hide these three rows. So I select them, right click, and then I select hide. And you can see that the first version of the subtotal function where I use nine has ignored the fact that I've hidden those rows, but the second version hasn't. The version that uses 109 only adds up the visible records when I manually hide rows. So hopefully now you can see the difference between the three calculations. Now, subtotal has another trick up its sleeve. Let's look at our second example. So I'm gonna start off by sorting these branches in ascending order. And then I'm going to use the subtotal command rather than the subtotal function. Now to do that, what you do is you click anywhere in your data, go to the data tab on your ribbon, then over to this outline button, and then choose subtotal from the menu. Now, what I can do here is I can specify that at each change of a particular column within my data, I want to create automatic subtotals. So for me, that's at each change in branch, I want to use the sum function, although I could use other functions if I wanted to, to create a subtotal in the revenue column. So it's kind of guess what I wanted to do there, but you may need to change these options in your data. Click on OK. And what it's done is created automatic subtotals for each branch. Now the subtotals that have been created for us actually use the subtotal function. Now, if you look at the numbers up here, you can see that they are now different. Sum has a much larger revenue figure than the subtotal functions. And that's because subtotal ignores nested subtotals in your column, whereas sum includes them in its calculation. So it's including 
the Brighton and Hove total. So essentially it's double counting the Brighton and Hove revenue figures and for the Carlisle figures. Now these figures aren't actually right. If I have a look, I'm going to need to extend the range down a little bit. Also for these. So it includes those last two rows. But hopefully you can see why the subtotal function is useful in this scenario. Now, if I use these little minus buttons here to hide a particular branch, you can see that the subtotal function that uses 109 ignores the rows that I've manually hidden. So that's another example of the difference between these two versions of the subtotal function. Lastly, we're going to look at how we can use subtotals within an Excel table. So what I mean by an Excel table is where you click into your data and then you go to insert and then table. You then have to click on OK in this dialog box. And when you do so, you get a table design tab on your ribbon with the option to show a total row. So if I tick this total row tick box here, you can see that it creates a subtotal for the revenue. Now, if I filter out particular products, that revenue will automatically update based on the visible rows. Now, if I remove that filter, and a look at the subtotal formula that's being used. You can see it's using the 109 version of the sum calculation, which should mean that if I manually hide rows, this will update to reflect the hidden rows, and it has. Now you can in fact create a calculation in any of these cells within the total row. So for example, I could do a count here. All you need to do is click on the little drop down and it will give you a list of all the calculations that you can perform. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.